What's up guys, it's your boy Metrafter, also known as Luxon Spatella, and welcome to another part of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone walkthrough series. Last time we pretty much did a lot of shenanigans, we had to sneak around Filch, we had to do some solid snaking, and I know I made a lot of jokes about that, but today it is time to actually do the final part. This is the Forbidden Corridor, we're gonna go do all the trials all the way to the end. Because if you've seen the movie or read the book, you kind of know what's going on. And I may have said this a couple of times. But hey, it's just trying for it to be a surprise. Well, I know what is a surprise. It is this treasure chest. Open it. And in it, we will find a random damn wizard card. And this is wizard card number 24. And this is the last one you will see in this game. Because you might be thinking, but what about number 25? Well, number 25 is a little bit special. It's a little bit special, so, you know, you, you kind of have to wait for that. Nevertheless, we're just gonna go, uh, because there are no secrets, there are no other chests to find or something. It's just, you just gotta go with the flow. It's gonna be a pretty straightforward episode. We're just gonna go do the things that we need to do. And yeah, hopefully we will do them correctly and swiftly. So, uh, let's go to it. So I'm just gonna walk in here. This and way, Harry. Yeah, there, this is always a bug. First, it goes to the 16 by 9 cropping, and then it just goes back up to 4 by 3, and then it goes back to 16 by 9, and then because then suddenly the dialogue kicks in. I don't know what happened there. It's it's just always a thing. Anyways, let's just go and see what happens. Again, we just have to walk straight to a door, and then we'll get another cutscene. I think this is where the growling has been coming from. Hear that? I don't think we should go in there. But we've got to stop Snape. Go on, Harry. We're right behind you. I'll try the flute. That might put Fluffy to sleep for me. Do be careful. Alrighty. So we have to put Fluffy to sleep. Now here is the thing. If you're gonna play the flute... It sounds like shit. This is because you actually have to stand a bit closer to Fluffy in order for the flute to work. It doesn't make any sense, I know, but whatever. But here is the thing, there are three heads and you have to make sure that you put all three heads to sleep at the same time. So you win once you got all three heads in sleep modus at the same time. But here is the thing of course, one head goes to sleep faster than the other head. So you have to make sure you find a pattern which is that you have to put the one head to sleep which takes the longest to get to sleep. And I should probably explain as well, the one that takes the longest to get to sleep will also sleep the longest. So it also takes that the same amount of time for that head to wake up. Sounds quite complicated. And what I've noticed is that the pattern is actually randomized, I think. Because I've noticed that when I was doing it in the practice run, I was saying, okay, I have to do the left uh, head and then the right head and then the middle. And then I tried to confirm it and it was still the same. But then I tried to do it one more time and it was randomized. So it was pretty weird. So I'm gonna do the left, right, middle thing and see if that works. So again, you have to step a little bit closer, but it will try to bite you, so back off when you it's gonna bite you because it actually has an indication. Now this one, you can see, it, it, it doesn't take that long for it to go to sleep. So we're gonna try to do it again with the middle head. And you see that one takes the longest. Alright, and then the right one takes... Uh, let's see, I think that takes the second... Yeah, this one goes the fastest. So the, the pattern is middle, right, left. So let's try to do this. And again, oh, it's gonna bite. Uh, we have to stand back and then try to do this again. It's quite annoying. Oh, it's gonna try to do it again. And then we're gonna try to do the right head. Oh, it's gonna try to bite me. So here we go. And now we gotta be really quick. 
one, two, three, and there we go. You want to go first, Hermione? No, I don't. Right. See you in a minute. I hope. It's okay! It's a soft landing! You can jump! Come on, Harry. Whoa! Ah! I know what this is. It's the Devil's Snare. Next time I'm going to pay more attention in herbology. Help! It's a Devil's Snare! Try not to get too close to those tentacles. Weird dialogue. Really weird dialogue. Also, it might lag extremely. This is because I can't help it. Now you're probably gonna think, what's the strategy here? Um, there isn't one. Really, it's just kinda just spam the shit out of everything. And I'm not even kidding. Just you just gotta spam the shit out of everything, and I'm actually trying to um, get Hermione. There we go. One more time, I think. I think I've done it. I think I've done it. There we go, now we've done it. Thanks, Harry. That was close, Harry. This way, Harry. You have to catch the key, Harry. Time to put your Quidditch skills to practice. Up. Good luck, Harry. Oh boy, this one. This is gonna be fun. But first I have to find the key, the magic key. Here it is. I'm actually really close to it. Alright, now the fun begins. Now we really gotta race it. We have to race it and we really have to make sure we're in close proximity to it at all times. At all freaking times. But you know, you've seen this from Ridditch already. Ow! I got hit there. Uh, where are you going? Sometimes you actually outrun it, and that's the thing, because then you're not technically not closer to it, which makes this whole thing a little bit more annoying. Oh, come on. Why do I get hit there? I get stunned and then I can't control my room. Come on. Just let me get in close proximity to it. It's basically Quidditch, so it's not really hard, it's just painstakingly annoying when you can't get really closer to it because then you're outrunning all the time. You see? Ugh. So I might be slower than everyone else doing this uh, trial run, but hey, you know, here's the thing. There's no time limit or anything. Okay, let's try to grab it. And there we go. We have got it. And we do a weird glitch. <laughs> well done, Harry. Let's see where this leads. Gigantic chessboard. Ron's gone through to play. I hope he's all right. Little bit of lag there uh, in the opening cutscene of this map, but let's try to do this anyways. It's the chessboard thing, which I actually loved uh, as a kid. The whole scene and the whole uh, aspect of it. First, let's uh, go and save it up. So now that we are saved up, we can play the chess game. Now, here's the thing: I don't play chess, so I don't really know the rules of chess. But, uh, <laughs> I know how to beat this one, though, so it's all gonna be good. Oh, Ron, are you alright? I've defeated most of the pieces, but I've been hurt. It's up to you now, Harry. <sighs> Harry, 
You have to be careful and avoid the pieces. They all move one square at a time. You'll have to make the pieces fight each other in order to get across safely. Walk onto the board, Harry, to start the game. Do be careful. So yeah, the rules are pretty simple because every piece can only move, you know, one space. So that actually makes it quite easy for me. Now, I think the way this works is that uh, the pieces have to stand diagonally. One piece has to uh, move one space so that uh, two pieces are facing each other diagonally and then they fight. So you are also a piece in this game. Uh, I don't know what kind of piece, but you're a piece, a chess piece. And we have to move one tile at a time to actually make sure that all the pieces on the board are destroyed. So it's not like you're playing, you know, one side and you and like you're playing white and one plays black. No, you're just you're just the third party that wants to win it all or something. It's pretty weird how they've done this. But again, pretty damn cool. Uh, but I think the scene in the movie with Ron making that one move to sacrifice himself. Damn, that was badass shit, man. That was awesome. Anyways, let's try to do this. We have to start on the uh, white tile here. So these two are always gonna fight. There's like, no matter where you stand, they're always going to fight. So then, each piece moves, and you know, they all do their own little thing. Uh, we're gonna go one step forward now. So this one is gonna face us, but now he's diagonally with that piece, so they're destroyed. We didn't get hit by the debris. Of course, these two are parallel, but they're on the same team, so nothing happens. And now you got them in a pretty good position. Because if we go diagonally this way, this one will be par uh, parallel diagonal with this one. And now there's only a problem with this one, because they're getting awfully close. But again, we're going to go diagonal this way, and now there's pretty much no choice, <laughs> because these two are going to fight. And that's it. Come on, let's go. All right, let's go. Really weird room and everything, but I'm going to dig it. But first, there is a safe book, so I'm going to go and save it up, of course. All right, all saved up. We're going to go to the next trial, as I like to call it, which is a bit random because I don't think this was actually in anything. Okay. Oh no! The exit is blocked by magical fire. Looks like you have to choose the right potion. Be careful, Harry. It could be poison. This one looks like it will help us through the fire. Watch closely and keep your eye on the correct potion. Then choose wisely. This one was easy. And yes, you have to flipendo the correct potion. Flipendo! So yeah. Here it goes again. Please don't lag. There we go. So far so good. And I don't blink. If I blink, then everything is over. <laughs> hey, it's in the same position again. That's quite handy. So let's do this again. Faster this time. Shut up, Hermione. All right, there's this is the annoying thing. You have to turn around because I know it's this one. But then, play close attention because you know you're on the other side of the table now, so you gotta know where you're standing and where the correct That's potion really is. Confusing. Shut up. For instance, now I know it's, you know, I this is annoying because I know where it is, but I have to turn around and make sure it wasn't on the left or wasn't on the right. Now I know it's on the right. You understand me? It's annoying. It's really annoying when you're switching from table now, sides. That's ridiculous. This is still actually quite easy. Yep. Whoa. A little bit of lag there, but uh, it's okay. Actually, Fraps kind of helps me because it slows things down just a little bit. 
All right. Well done, Harry. You picked the right one. I've done it. You've got to find Snape on your own. I'll go back and help Ron. Good luck, Harry. Great. We are a one-man team now. Pretty much, we all have to do this shit on our own. Predictably, but whatever. Let's go cross the fire. And if we go over here... There is a very generous treasure chest waiting for us with... Two frogs. And now I'm back at full health, which we're gonna need for the next couple parts. So yeah, let's continue and see what happens. That isn't Snape. I thought we were trying to chase Snape. What's Professor Quirrell doing here? Seriously, what's Professor Quirrell doing here? Uh. Also, what is up with these platforms? These are like the, uh, the most tight platforms ever! With the most tight... Oh man, I just made it. <laughs> Seriously, this is crazy. How does Professor Quirrell even do this? If he would trip on his own clothes, then... Shit! You know... You fall, you you fall and you die. But anyways, what's Professor Quirrell doing here? This is probably the, the biggest twist out of them all. It ain't Snape, it's Quirrell. What? I wondered whether I'd be meeting you here, Potter. I suppose you were expecting someone else. Well, it's me, scared, stuttering Professor Quirrell. You're far too inquisitive to remain among the living. Well, screw you! I learned Flipendo from you! And I'm going to use it against you! Just like you were trying to use it against me just now. Karma's a bitch! Or whatever. Anyways. You have to make... Uh... Wow, what the hell is going on here? Whoa, dodge that, dodge that, dodge that. Wow. What I'm trying to say is, you have to make like a little staircase out of these platforms. No. Let me just uh, try and uh, do this the proper way. I'm gonna pop this one back here, so that thing should be okay. I really need to get that frog though, because otherwise there will be problems. Thankfully, this block will give me a lot more protection. As in, it'll block all the spells from Pearl. The only problem is I have to touch it a little bit to the sides. Like so. And I think pretty much okay. And yes, it'll also try to use... Uh, you know, to use Flipendo against you to pretty much, <laughs> to pretty much push it back like a damn pussy. Also, I see I kind of made an error here. Oh well, that's okay. We can fix this. Wow! Thankfully, I can fix this. All right. And I think we should be pretty okay. Just make sure we put this here. Kind of dodge the attacks. And this is the most worrying part actually. Climbing up here while he's still performing his spells. It's a cheap move. What the fuck, Harry? Curses, Potter! You will not succeed again. Then it just <laughs> casually walks off. Like nothing has happened. Like honestly. Curses, Potter! You will not do this again! Uh, why do you walk away? Why don't you just kill me now? I mean, after that great entrance with me jumping on that ledge like a freaking idiot, I guess he kind of got scared. I will be too. Now you can hear frogs, and we're gonna pick up all the frogs because we're gonna need full health for this next part. We have to. Uh, I think we are at full health, so I'm gonna leave this frog alone just for what it is. Just in case things go horribly wrong for me somehow. And uh, let's go save it up. <laughs> 